the New York Yankees, the Dallas Cowboys, and the Los Angeles Lakers. All three organizations transcend sports. They have built up huge followings and at this point are undeniably international brands. You can travel just about anywhere in the world that has running water and electricity, and you'll find people walking around in these teams' apparel. The teams are just that popular, regardless of whether or not they're actually winning. But for all the love they get, there's a lot of hate that goes their way too. Not just because people love to hate, but because a lot of people get the sense that teams like the Lakers or the Yankees receive special treatment, above from their respective leagues, so to speak. The complaints are seemingly endless and they vary in their validity. Some people argue that the more prestigious teams get preferential media coverage, others think they get it through refereeing or in the form of how the league schedules their games. I don't know how realistic all of these claims are, but the last one definitely has some truth to it. I mean, how many mediocre Dallas Cowboys games have you seen featured in primetime? Primetime games aside, it's tough to say how definitively that any of these organizations are really receiving. Preferential treatment like so many opposing fans beat their chest about, but there is one team that definitely gets special treatment, Notre Dame football. The Fighting Irish definitely receive special treatment and rival programs should feel vindicated and their gripes with the football team in South Bend. I know, when you think about Notre Dame, it's easy to get nostalgic. Everyone has seen the famous Play Like a Champion Today sign that the players slapped coming out of the locker room, and of course everyone has seen Rudy. The history around the program has made it iconic, there is no denying that. The team has played in a number of the most famous college football games of all time and has built a tradition that is second to none. This is because the Fighting Irish have all sorts of little rituals that have been around forever and the players, alumni, and fans take so much pride in them. Whether it's the way the team turns to the student section to give a helmet salute at the conclusion of every home game, win or lose, or when the band plays the alma mater, Notre Dame, Our Mother, at the end of every game while the fans stand arm in arm and sing the lyrics or even the tradition of the stadium, which has an old-school vibe to it, similar to Fenway, where the Boston Red Sox play. It would be silly to try and discredit what they have built, but as a college football fan, it can be incredibly frustrating to watch Notre Dame continually be put in an echelon of teams that it just doesn't belong in as a result of the special treatment the Fighting Irish receive. Let's start with the obvious, because of how the NCAA college football season and playoffs are structured. Notre Dame is at a huge advantage because it opted out of joining a conference like the ACC, which is the conference that all of the school's other varsity programs compete in, by the way. Instead, it has remained an independent program since its inception back in 1887. And while it may have made practical sense for Notre Dame to compete as an independent program back then, a lot has changed, and at this point, Notre Dame maintains the status to give itself an unfair advantage in qualifying for the postseason. Unlike other programs like Auburn or Georgia, they have to play grueling conference schedules and have a much narrower degree of freedom in what non-conference games they can schedule. Notre Dame's coaching staff can set the schedule up however they want to. And it isn't something that they have ever tried to change, even when the school was receiving a ton of pressure to join a conference because of the unfair advantage its independent status was giving them, they were still able to weasel their way into keeping the status quo. The pressures reached a fever pitch back in 2012 during the football program's 125th season when the school's athletic department announced that it was leaving the Big East Conference for the ACC, effective July 1st of the following year. Obviously, the ACC would have wanted Notre Dame's football team to join as well, but the Fighting Irish had other ideas. Instead, they negotiated a deal that really only Notre Dame could pull off. They reached an agreement that would have them play against five ACC opponents every year, but they would not officially be joining the conference. This allowed them the scheduling flexibility that they love having, as well as not having to worry about winning a conference title game, which is something that the College Football Playoff Selection Committee considers to be extremely valuable on prospective teams' playoff resumes. Outside of the five ACC opponents that the Fighting Irish play every year, they tend to schedule just one or two tougher opponents and a bunch of cupcakes, because if it comes down to an undefeated Notre Dame team and a more deserving one-loss team that played a tougher schedule, Notre Dame will always edge them out and make the playoffs even if their talent on the field has no shot against the other playoff teams. I mean, we have seen how that goes. The last time this happened was in 2018. After going a perfect 12-0 in the regular season, Notre Dame was selected by the College Football Playoff Selection Committee and squared off with the Clemson Tigers. Granted, it was an all-time good Clemson team that won the whole thing, but the Tigers absolutely trounced Notre Dame by a score of 30-3. The game was simply an embarrassment, an embarrassment that seemed to happen every time Notre Dame was unfairly positioned to play in college football's most important games. Games that, if leveraged correctly, 
can be a huge recruiting tool and a cog in the ability of the nation's premier programs to reload talent year after year. It isn't just the added exposure that helps these universities keep fresh talent coming to their campuses either. There's a tremendous financial benefit for schools like Notre Dame, who finish with a strong enough resume to be selected for a BCS game. And it's a financial benefit that Notre Dame has a huge unfair advantage in earning because it is independent. If Notre Dame is selected for a BCS spot, which they are practically a lock for if they finish in the top 12, they receive over $4 million. It's crazy. Not only does it seem like they have this extra advantage when it comes down to selection time, but there is quite literally a Notre Dame clause that is written into BCS bylaws. This is how the BCS bylaws automatic qualification rule number four reads, word for word. But Notre Dame will be guaranteed one of the at-large slots in a BCS bowl if it is ranked number eight or better in the final BCS standings, end quote. Meaning, once again, that more deserving teams may be ousted from BCS opportunities and additional funding just because Notre Dame is Notre Dame. That sounds super fair. At least the NCAA has rewritten their agreement, though. In the previous agreement, Notre Dame receives $14 million just for a BCS appearance. What an unfair advantage. Between that extra BCS money and the lucrative Notre Dame brand, it's no wonder they are always a step ahead on the recruiting trail. It isn't just that Notre Dame has an extra edge in getting into the playoffs, which exponentially increases the program's profitability, though. It seems like they are always getting special treatment in one way or another. And it always ties back into making the school more money, which they can in turn pour back into the program, continuing the cycle. Think about the way college football's revenue streams are distributed. Every other team in the nation, apart from service academies, has to split the gains from bowl games and television deals with everyone else in its conference. Granted, it isn't a dead-even split, but it is a split nonetheless. But not Notre Dame. Because of Notre Dame's status as an independent, they are able to keep all of this additional funding. And while it might seem marginal, considering the scale that these programs operate at, when you take a look at some of the revenue streams Notre Dame has exclusive access to, it really is shocking. Notre Dame has an exclusive contract with NBC, which is why you see them on national television so much. But beyond just the exposure of being on national TV, the Fighting Irish were also able to negotiate their own deal and once again, not worry about splitting the revenue with anyone, like the teams whose conferences negotiate their television deals. Not only does Notre Dame use all this money and exposure to their advantage, but they have also created a rather fishy system around how it markets and leverages the school's academic reputation. I'm sure academics who apply to Notre Dame without the assistance of being a star football player are very talented students. And there are definitely very smart football players that have played in South Bend, don't get me wrong. But Notre Dame has very laissez-faire standards that they have famously kept proprietary, which more than likely means that they have slid guys through that may have not lived up to the school's rigorous academic reputation. What makes all of it even worse is the fact that Notre Dame and its fans love to gush over their beloved football program more often than not with a holier-than-thou routine that just doesn't align with reality. The Fighting Irish have actually been involved in a number of different controversies that contradict the image that the school loves to project. There was the infamous Catholics vs. Convicts game against the University of Miami. Heading to this game at Notre Dame Stadium, the two teams were undefeated. Miami was the current defending national champion and held the number one ranking. Notre Dame was ranked number four, so tensions were high. So high that the teams actually got into a huge brawl in the tunnel before the game. Or how about back in 2005, when Notre Dame was squaring off the number one ranked USC Trojans in what was dubbed by many as the latest game of the century? USC was known across the country for featuring some of the best athletes in all of college football. Guys like Reggie Bush and Dwayne Jarrett, who were simply forces to be reckoned with in college primarily because of their blazing speed. So what did Notre Dame and head coach Charlie Weiss do? They had the groundskeepers grow out the grass on the field to try and slow down USC's players. Ignoring the fact that this really doesn't make a ton of sense, as both teams have to run on the same grass. This is actually against the NCAA rules because of player safety concerns. But of course that didn't stop Weiss and Notre Dame, who threw caution to the wind and grew the grass out anyway. Fortunately, karma came for them in the form of the infamous Bush push that won USC the game in the final seconds. So yeah, next time a Notre Dame fan tries to wax poetically about how upstanding their program is, just smile and nod. Between their way too outspoken fans, who generally believe that they are all still part of a powerhouse program, delusional thoughts from Fantasy Island, and all the special treatment the team receives in the midst of its consistent underachievement, 
Notre Dame is simply one of those teams that is hateable, and honestly, it's well-deserved. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, now's a great time to click the subscribe button down below. If you like the video, then like the video. We'd really appreciate it. And last but not least, don't forget to tune in to TPS for more cool videos every single day.